Shin Yash. yesterday in the home opener. First time they've been shut out in a home opener since 1967. That was against the Red Sox, so they'll try to bounce back today. Let's take a look at the pitching matchup. It's not going to be easy. Kevin Gosman finished third in the American League Cy Young voting last year. He gets to start for the Blue Jays, and for the Yankees, it's Clark Schmidt, and we'll take a look at his first start. That was against the Astros. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, Clark Schmidt, his uh, importance to this rotation is m much bigger now with Garrett Cole on, on the uh, IL, and all of a sudden, he got to Houston. Velocity was up. He absolutely dominated the game for the first four innings, and all of a sudden, you get to the fifth inning, and I don't know if it's a head game or what, but Clark Schmidt's got to figure out how to get later in the game. All right, against the Blue Jays last year, he did not win 0-2. You see the numbers that he had against Toronto. Well, the Yankees suffered a tough loss with a Jonathan Loisinger on a 60-day IL. He might miss the entire season. So who steps up? The bullpen is so important to the Yankees. Merrick Moragovitz here from Aaron Boone when we return next on Yes. The Yankees and the Blue Jays is coming your way in just a few minutes. Hey everyone, I'm Meredith Morakovitz. The Yankees were dealt a devastating blow to the back end of their bullpen today when Jonathan Loisaga announced he would be out for the remainder of the 2024 season. He's opting to have surgery to repair a tear in his elbow, though Loisaga went on to say it is not Tommy John surgery. The recovery, however, will take 10 to 12 months. Earlier, Aaron Boone shed some light on the injury. It's tough news. Um, you know, the first thought is just just for him. You know, you feel for him and throwing the ball so well. Um, you know, he's just dealt with things over the last years that have, I think, added up to this point. So I, I know they're still collecting some, you know, opinions and making sure everything's dialed in. So, um, but, yeah, I mean, it's just got to – somebody else needing to emerge and step up and become an important role and hopefully we can pick him up while boone said he's confident in the guys that he has in his bullpen it's going to take a little bit of time to see who he can trust in that role previously filled by jonathan loisica plenty more to come here on the yes network when we get back michael k will be joined by paul o'neill clark schmidt gets the ball after the break the Towers help America's heroes donate $11 a month at T2T.org. Buy Hyundai. It's your journey. Own every mile of a brand new Hyundai. And by Yale New Haven Health, powering medical breakthroughs. Well, we are getting ready for baseball here at the home office for baseball in the Bronx, Yankee Stadium, 161st Street and River Avenue. Yankees will try to even up this series after losing yesterday by a score of three to nothing. The Yankees are six and two, and the two losses they have, well, they've been shut out in both of those losses. It's strange, Paul. They've had the combination to win the six games, but there's things you want to tighten up. There's a lot of guys that aren't hitting. Yeah, I mean, we talked about a lot in Houston, how they were grinding at bats and wearing pitchers out. Uh, there were some easy innings yesterday, and then, you know, you look at Marcus Stroman right there. He gave them an unbelievable chance by the way he pitched to win that game yesterday off Offensively, it just didn't happen. Now, Clark Schmidt will go for the Yankees. We talked about him in the open, and it's something to watch with, with Clark. It just seems something clicks in or clicks out that third time through the order. You know he's got the stuff, and lefties were two for eight against 
season for the Astros. They don't have many great lefties with the uh, the Blue Jays, so it's going to be interesting if, if that's a mental hurdle or is, does he need a different pitch? Well, Michael, it is in my scouting report when we go about it, and, and it almost becomes a head game where you start to expect things to happen at certain times, but uh, no doubt in my mind that he can get deeper in the games. He has more pitches in his repertoire, so I, I think that, you know, it's just a learning phase, but uh, again, like we said in the pregame, his starts are much more important now with Garrett Cole on the I.L. Now let's talk a little Juan Soto. You couldn't get him out in Houston, and then he started a little bit in Arizona. All of a sudden, he's one for his last 16 with no extra base hit. So what are you seeing? Well, you never really see him off balance. You right. see him coming off the ball a little bit. You, you see some balls being pulled, ground balls. He's better when we saw him in Houston hitting the ball the other way, and then he'll he'll turn on a ball when he need, when need be. Uh, he's pumped up every time he runs into that outfield and the crowd just showering him with love yesterday and today as well. And he's going to feed off that as the season goes along. Look at that. This happened yesterday, and it's happening today. And he knows how to work a crowd, that is for sure. Juan Soto is just a flat-out 25-year-old superstar. Well, the Yankees have taken the field. Let's take a look at the Blue Jays' starting lineup, which is brought to you by TikTok. Springer, Guerrero, and Bichette, all of them not hitting. That's the top third of the Blue Jay order. Turner, Vogelbach, and Clement. That's the middle third. And then you got Varsho, Servin, and Kiermeyer in the bottom third for the Blue Jays. And the guy that we talked about who's going to try to get the Mount Clark Schmidt against the Astros. Didn't get a decision. Yankees won the game. Five and a third inning, seven hits, three runs. Didn't walk a batter. That's key. And five strikeouts. So let's check out the Nissan Pitcher Scatter Report. Well, good 25. 25 starts last year with three or fewer, three or fewer runs. And that's tied for fourth in the American League with who? Kevin Gosman, and that's who he's going up to against tonight. Velocity was up. Sinker and his cutter were almost two miles an hour faster in his first start in Houston than they were last year. And, Michael, this is what we're talking about. You've got to figure a way. I think it becomes a mental thing. He's got good enough stuff to pitch past that fifth inning where he goes through the lineup the third time around. He's got to figure it out. It'll help the team, and it'll help our bullpen. All right, let's take a look now at the defense behind Clark Schmidt. Verdugo's in left, Judge in center, and the aforementioned Soto over at right. In the infield, he didn't play yesterday. Back in the lineup today, Oswaldo Cabrera. The red-hot Anthony Volpe is at short. Clay Torres in second. Anthony Rizzo is at first. Stands behind the plate. And Austin Wells is on the mound. Game time weather presented by Bigelow, the official hot tea of the Yankees. 48 degrees, feels a bit chillier. 6% chance of rain, humidity 46%. The wind is blowing in from left field. It's not a warm breeze either. No, no. We got you all set, though. Springer's ready. Schmidt is ready. Now let's do it in the Bronx. Pitch is up and away, and we're underway. Lance Barksdale is the home plate umpire. Angel Hernandez at first. Nick Lentz at second. And Emil Jimenez is over at third. Let's scout the home plate umpire, Lance Borgsdale. Hitter friendly. Paul loves it. Fewer inside strikes on left-handed batters. He's the crew chief, 25th major league season. Well, you got to watch it here. Springer loves to jump that fastball first at bat. We talked about it yesterday. 57 leadoff home runs, which is at five against the Yankees. Second all-time behind probably the greatest uh, leadoff hitter of all time, Ricky Henderson. Is it just me or is the crowd in full voice today? I tell you what, they didn't get to cheer for the offense yesterday, so they're you know they're they're still waiting, and uh, yeah, it looks like they're ready to go. Did he go? No, he did not. Blue Jays are four and four. The Yankees are six and two. Oh, right on the line. 
too, Michael. Well, Springer, four for 28 coming into that at bat. Here's Guerrero, five for 29. The top three batters, all all-stars, and you see on Super Shot how he goes the other way. And Bo Bichette is three for 25. These are really ex excellent hitters and gotten called at the beginning of the year. Only two. You know, you can look at it a couple ways. Obviously, they're off the bad starts, but a lot of their numbers, their good numbers, are at home. And Bo Bichette particularly. So, uh, you know, they have not played at home yet. So, uh, hopefully, uh, the Yankees can shut them down a couple games before they take off. And on the Yankees' next road trip, it's Cleveland and then to Toronto, where they've redone the Rogers Center. They made it a little bit more intimate, so it'll be interesting to see that. So the Yankees will have six games with the Blue Jays in the first month. Mm -hmm. They only play them 13 times all year. Broke the bat. Soft ground ball up the middle. Volpe fields. And will get Guerrero as Springer moves to third. All right, Paul, let's get to work. Keys to the game brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Well, tough customer. We talked about it. Gosman, since 2022 when he went to the Blue Jays in seven starts against the Yankees, 1.17 ERA. And you got to keep even that Blue Jays offense. I mean, they're not good right now. We just talked about it. they're just not clicking. Might be a great time to face them. But you got to score runs yourself and back to business. You know, the big road trip now opening day is over. Now it's starting to it's time to really start playing some good baseball, especially here in the state. Well, the Yankees know who they're facing. It's Kevin Gosman, one of the best pitchers in the game. They bring the infield in like they did yesterday as well, trying to cut off this run. Runner on third base, one man out, just underway at the stadium. Oh, and two. Wow, that's a pitcher. Clarksman has always had. He's been able to spin the ball away from righties and get a lot of swing and misses. Do you waste a pitch up and in to set that up, or you just continually go outside and see if he'll fish again? And the 0-2. Push the envelope there, one and two. Yeah, good play by Wells, and this is the first game and uh, first game for Schmidt and Houston. Trevino behind the plate, but again went offside even farther in the other batter's box, and a good pick by Wells. One two, swing and a miss. Big strikeout for Schmidt, two away. It's just a great sequence after getting to a swing and a miss away, another slider in the other batter's box. Now the sinker in, and it just ties him up. Swing and a miss. Now you've got an opportunity again with two outs to get out of this inning and a big pickup for the, for the Yankees. Well, they've got to get a dangerous hitter out to get out of this. That's Justin Turner. First inning yesterday, he hit a hard line drive right at Volpe. As he swings and misses on the cutter. Talk about a crafty veteran, Justin Turner, 39 years old, 16th season, one World Series with the Dodgers, two-time All-Star, 27 home runs is his career, you know, best, and he's a career 288 hitter. Good guy to have at the plate, driving in runs. One and two as Schmidt dialed that up to 95 miles an hour, so a strike away from working out of this. Yesterday, this is one loud crowd. <laughs> You'd be kidding me in the first inning here. I, I'm, I'm really rooting for a strikeout just to see what happens. <laughs> oh, 
And if you look in the left field and the right field bleachers, I, I, I don't think you can shoehorn another person in there. I mean, it is jam-packed. It better be close and cold well, I was going to say, you know, you can use everybody else's body here. So you don't get many Saturday night baseball games in the Bronx. You know, I'm like discombobulated today. Yeah. I'm like, what night is it? It's like a Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? right? All right, so three and two on the veteran Turner. Springer is at third. And the payoff. Grounded to short. Volpe, listen to the crowd. So the Blue Jays waste the leadoff double and the Yankees come to bat. He's starting lineup. That'll try to put some crooked numbers up. It's brought to you by TikTok. Torres, Soto, and Judge at the top of the order. Rizzo, Stanton, and Verdugo right dab in the middle. And then the bottom third, the red-hot Volpe, Wells, and Cabrera. And they're facing a good one. Kevin Gosman. Four and a third innings in his season opener against the Rays. Two hits, one run. Didn't walk batter, struck out six through 69 pitches. Let's check out the Nissan Pitcher Scouting Report. Well, he is the ace. Michael, you mentioned he was third in the American League in the Cy Young last year behind Garrett Cole and Sonny Gray. Led the league with 237 strikeouts. A lot has to do with that split finger. Unbelievable splitter since 2020. Batting average against 168 strikeout, 44.2% of the time. Walter Johnson. Big train. Big train. He was the only pitcher in history to have four consecutive road starts against the Yankees. Went. Shutouts, right? Well, Kevin Gosman comes in tonight with three of those type of games. Consecutive scoreless outings in Yankee Stadium. Glaber Torres leads off. Now, he's the ace, but he didn't start the season opener for the Blue Jays. And there's a reason he had shoulder fatigue in spring training, so they really slow rolled him. And he only threw 69 pitches in his first start and really rounding into form. High fly ball, shallow left coming in Varsho. One down. Well, we've seen Varsho and left. Kevin Kiermaier can go get him with anybody. He's in center. George Springer over at right. In the infield, it's Turner at third. Bichette at short. Clement is the second baseman. Bob Guerrero at first. Serving behind the plate. And here's Juan Soto. You see Juan Soto, a lot of times he'll take the first pitch. He's aggressive here. And the reason is, I mean, when you know a guy has that good of a split finger, the last thing you want to do is give them strikes with the fastball where they can get in a strikeout count and use that split finger. Now, we mentioned that Soto, you couldn't get him out in Houston in the Yankees four-game sweep of the Astros. Then he, he cooled down a little bit in Arizona. He's one for 16 since that four-game set against the Astros. Still hitting 303, home run and four ribbies. One and two. I was talking to Buck Martinez, who does the the play-by-play -play for the Blue Jays, and Schneider said that he... Uh, doesn't think Gosman's on a pitch count tonight. Uh, that, uh, you know, if he's dealing, he's going to pitch. Two and two. I mean, those are such good takes. You just don't understand how hard that split finger is. One of the tougher pitchers to pick up because uh, the arm speed's the same and the ball just doesn't quite get there. It has a weird spin to it. Great takes. Foul the way. That splitter has been a great weapon for him. You just saw those numbers. 2-2. Two -two. Uh, 
you know what? However this at bat ends up, it's impressive. He's taken the split fingers. He's fouled off the fastballs. I mean, he's not going through the best time of the year offensively, but still, it is a grind to get Juan Soto up. And it benefits Aaron Judge. He's seen a lot of pitches mm -hmm. sitting there in the on deck zone. It's impressive to me. I mean, you're in trouble. You're 0-2 against a guy who's got the best split finger in the American League, and you take him, you foul off a fastball, and then get ball four. That just is a well-played at bat. Here's Judge. There's a strike. Aaron, five hits in 30 at bats. Now, he's a 290 hitter. Lifetime against Gosman, nine for 31 with three home runs, but Gosman's gotten him too. Mm -hmm. 14 strikeouts. Michael, I think I was reading in the notes that after tonight, after a couple of bats, I think this will be, he'll have more plate appearances against Gosman than any other pitcher in yep. major leagues. So seven coming into the game, the fewest through eight games they've had since 2014. High fly ball, shallow right field. Guerrero makes the play. <laughs> Didn't make that look as easy as it was, right? Watch well, Aaron Judge, and this is a split finger that kind of runs right back into the barrel of his back. Michael, you love these. Oh, Gives you plenty of time to really get it out. Huh? He's very, very amenable to that. I talked to him about it. Well, again, you can watch Aaron Judge is more consistent with his approach every year. Uh, you know, you, you can break him down game after game, and his swing basically looks the same. Stanton goes the other way in deep. Springer back. Track. Wall. Leaps. See ya. A home run for Stanton. because that ball's out of the ballpark. I 
don't think that fan reached over. Nope. That fan didn't catch the ball either. Kind of an E uh, bleacher bump. <laughs> I mean, they could say that he would have made the catch if the guy didn't touch it, but the guy did not reach out onto the field to play. Yeah, but look, when he touched, it's already by Springer's glove. Yeah. So this ball's After the review, the call on the field stands. It is a home run. It's got to be horrible. You know what? You think you have a home run, then you got to wait for the replay, and they can actually take it away from him. And he's been struggling, too, yes. so you know he was biting his nails as they were looking at that one. Here's Verdugo. And a strike. Three runs allowed. First five batters, they had not allowed a run in the previous 20 innings at Yankee Stadium. Paul told you about that, so Walter Johnson can rest easy. Yeah. Going to stay that record at four. It's not going to happen tonight. Well, Verdugo flirted with a game tying home run, the final out of the game yesterday, but. Just missed it. One two count on the Yankee left fielder. Two and two. You know, I thought about that on the way home yesterday, Michael, that he was close. I mean, <laughs> he didn't miss that ball by much by tying that game up yesterday in the bottom of the ninth. Grounded to first. As Guerrero steps on the bag, and that'll do it. Couple of home runs for the Yankees. Judge goes yard. A two run blast. Then Stanton goes yard. When those two guys home run the game, the Yankees are 31 and 4. Settle in. Well, the Yankees give Clark Schmidt three runs in the bottom of the first inning. Now he deals a strike to Daniel Volkbach. One and one. <laughs> you just look at him like he, he should be at the, uh, you know, the, the softball game next door, right? Or WrestleMania in Philly. Yeah, exactly. I got a number for you after this pitch, Mike. I'm going to see if you can put it all together. 1,884 plate appearances. Right. What's that mean to you? Anything? No. All right. That's his number in his career. He is second most of any player to never have a stolen base attempt in 1,884 plate appearances. All right. Who's first? Do we know? Yeah. Joey... Johnny Estrada, who was a catcher with the Braves, he had 2,244. So you don't have to worry. You don't even have to hold these guys on. No, I guess not. <laughs> and he gets on base, too. He walks right. a lot. He's just he's not taking second. Blue Jays have some large people on their team. You got Vogelback. You got Kirk. You got Guerrero. Big men. Swing and a miss. Cutter tying it up. Look at Aaron Judge on that split finger. He kind of pulls his hands in. That split finger, split finger was coming in on him. But you know what? That's just a beautiful thing because he gets total extension with that body frame. The ball's going a long way. Here's Ernie Clement. Yesterday, a pinch at home run broke a nothing nothing game. And the Blue Jays held on. They scored two more in the ninth. Cracked into left center field. On the run is Verdugo. He's not going to get there. It splits the outfielders. It's going to roll to the wall. And Clement will stop at second with a double. Second double for the Blue Jays. 
Well, Clement had that huge home run yesterday off the bench as a pinch hitter and comes right out today. Ball up in the strike zone and hammers it to left center field. And this is where Aaron Judge, as a center fielder, you know, you're not going to catch the ball. You just have to come up with it cleanly, keep him at second base, not let him get to third with one out. Here's Dalton Varsho. Foul back to the screen, 0 1. See how effective that cutter was against Vogelback with the strike in on the hands, where that ball right there, the cutter out over the middle of the plate, is very hittable. You've got to be careful when, it, you, when you're throwing a cutter to make it come in off the plate inside the lefties. Tease for you, Paul. Yeah. I'm not going to give it away totally. What well, we have in the next inning, the third inning, an MVP coming in. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what sport, but an MVP. Looking forward to this. So, in other words, don't go anywhere. No, this is not time to get a snack. Yeah. You know, we mentioned a rare Saturday evening game in the Bronx. Most of the games the Yankees play on Saturday, they're at 1 o'clock. They're 105 starts. Mm -hmm. But there's a method to everything. There's a reason for everything, Paul. Yankees are coming back from the West Coast Wednesday night. So they didn't know when they were going to get in. So they didn't want to have their home opener on Thursday. Right. Because you want to have, have the body time to rush from the West Coast trip. So they have the home opener on Friday. You have Saturday as an off day. Because usually when you have an opener in an outdoor ballpark in the East, you have a day off after that. So that the opener could then be that day off. Mm -hmm. Well with a night game on Saturday, if in fact yesterday had been rained out, snowed out, whatever, they would have played a day-night doubleheader today with the opener being the day game. A little double dip on Saturday. Yeah. People are happy they're here tonight. Now after the game, you and I, I think we should go to stands to party with the fans again. Billy's. Let's go to Billy's. Oh, I'll go to Billy's. You know why? Because Billy's has my IPA over there. Let's I heard go. <laughs> Let's I, go. I just heard it through the grapevine. Just All say. right. And you can walk in like a big shot. It's not me. <laughs> yeah. Like the old Western. Yes. It's not me. Gun smoke. Swing and a miss. Varsha down on strikes. Third strikeout for Schmidt. Again, he's been tough with men in, on, on base. And, uh, uh, you know, he kind of a backup. Not exactly where he wanted it, but the off speed. Got a swing and a miss from Varsho. They're serving. And a strike. Yeah, both the strikeouts, Michael, if you think about it, have been, uh, against the lefties have been on that cut. And he's really, really relying on that much more. And like we said, the velocity's up on it a little bit this year. So it's been a good pitch for him so far. Grounded third base, backhanded by Oswald. Across the game and got him. Beautiful play by Cabrera. And once again, the Blue Jays waste a double. Nice backhand into foul territory. A lot of arm getting served for the final out. Now tonight's picture was submitted by the Blue Weiss family. Brett and Sydney welcome to baby girl Desi Jeter to the world just in time for Yankee season. How about Desi Jeter? Don't think it doesn't have something to do with Derek Jeter, right? I bet it does. It's it's like that generation that has that name, though. Like O'Neill Cruz. There you go. Use the hashtag code of Pinstripe Pride. Mention yes in pictures you post to social media to reflect your love for the Bronx Bombers. We might spotlight you in a future game. Here's Anthony Volpe sporting a 500 on base percentage. 
11 for 26, a 423 average, an OPS of 1.154. And a bunt. But it's foul. He had Turner back. He also had Turner at 39 years old. Thought he'd give it a shot. A uh, great idea. I mean, uh, lucky it went foul because he didn't get it out on the grass deep enough where it was going to be a base hit. But, you know, that's his thinking. As well as he's swinging the bat, to, to be able to think about doing something in that like that to lead off an inning, I like it. So Galsman served up two home runs in the first inning, a two-run shot to Judge, a solo shot to Sam. So it's 3-0 Yankees. That one hits the outside corner with a slider, 0-2. One and two on Volpe. They've been breaking down Volpe on MLB Network. Mm -hmm. Mark DeRosa, Harold Reynolds saying he is poised to have a great year taking that next step. They, they said they're, they're very glaring changes in the swing. Well, I mean, it, he flattened it out. There's no doubt about that. And obviously, it's going to put more balls in play and take away some of the strikeouts. But it's all about seeing the ball. He took a split finger early in this count. I mean, again, it's about swinging at strikes. And, uh, you know, he, he's got a year under his belt. He's a gold glover. I mean, there's a lot to look forward to in Anthony Volpe. The 2-2. Oh, it looked, looked like Barksdale wanted to say strike, but he held his hand down. Oh, he called it a strike? Yeah, I think they're possibly thinking it was catcher's interference, and he thought he might have uh, tipped the glove. We'll have to see that from the side. But obviously, the pitch right down the middle was strike. I, I think he was looking for the finger. See if he touched the glove? I might have. I don't know, but it looked like he had yeah. already caught the ball. Well, obviously, it hit yeah. Servin. So Boone tells Barksdale that. Yeah, he definitely hit the glove, but I don't know, you know, if the catcher's already received the ball. What, what do we do about this? I, I think I, I think it would be catcher's interference. New York is challenging that there was catcher's interference. Volpe right away said to Barksdale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the pitch is definitely a strike. Again, you, you get caught looking for that split finger. You take a fastball down the middle, but he did catch him. It looks like on the wrist. It was clear he hit it. Are they going to say it wasn't a swing? And he can say it wasn't a swing because I couldn't get the bat around. He just hit the glove. Yeah, I mean, you can easily, if you get that bat in the strike zone, swing or not, you can easily foul the ball off. Right. Now, Anthony's standing on first base. He's, he seems like he's sure that it's catcher's interference in the knee, too. I'm taking a long look at it back at headquarters. Looks like serving is okay at least. After review, the call on the field is overturned. There's catcher's interference. New York will retain their challenge. Well, good challenge by Boone and his staff, and now John Schneider wants an explanation, but it was clear he hit the glove. Hey, hit the glove. I, the only question in my mind was it already in the glove, but, uh, you know, fortunately, for Volpe, the ball was a strike. I mean, it did come into play. It was on first base. I'll tell you what, Paul, it's a, it's a rule that has to be revisited because I think 
in any spot. I'm not saying that a player would want to do this, but if he's overmatched, you can definitely tick a glove if you want. I used to think that, remember Ellsbury used to do it all the time. Yes. You think that he would actually reach to swing to catch the glove at times. I think David Cohn said in the series against the Diamondbacks, he'd like to see just a do over. Mm -hmm. Here's Austin Wells. Now, there are a lot of questions in yesterday's game. Why didn't you pinch at Cabrera and Wells for Birdie and Trevino against Trevor Richards? And, and Boone said, no, we were not going to do that because he has reverse splits. He's tougher on lefties than he is on righties. Mm -hmm. Runner goes. There's a strike for the second. Not in time. Stolen base for Volpe. That's his first bag of the year. You expect many more. Sermon made the, the major league club. Danny Jansen broke his hand in spring training, or a bone in his wrist. So, kind of a backup catcher. Anthony Volpe with a great jump. In there easily. One one. Two and one. Second, nobody out. We're in the second inning. Yankees lead three nothing. First inning home runs by Judge and Stanton. Oswaldo Cabrera on deck. Well, if you're Anthony Volpe, this is a pitcher that a lot of times, as many split fingers as he throws, sometimes you can see that grip from second base, and you know, kind of anticipate that ball down in the dirt and try to teach your way to third base. The Wells works a walk. Now Volpe. Was good at stealing third last year. Nine of nine. But you don't do that with nobody out. MLB Ballpark app will complete your next visit to your favorite ballpark. Buy managed game tickets, redeem offers, access exclusive content, much more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. Here's Oswaldo. Turner in on the grass at third. Now one's low. Showed bunt, pulled it back, didn't offer one and oh. You know, love the play. If you get both these guys over, uh, you've already got a three run lead against one of the game's elite pitchers. You know, if you can tack on a few more, it's going to make things a lot easier for the Yankee pitching staff. Punted toward third foul. So two strikes that probably removes the bunt. Got some action. Mitch White in the Blue Jay bullpen. Two and two. All right, he deals. Three and two. This is what the Yankees have done. Even though their offense has not exploded over the first eight games, they work the count. They grind out at bats. They make starters throw a lot of pitches. Yeah, it's very tough to take that split finger. And I was talking about when Juan Soto was up there, but the Yankees, the Yankees have done a great job so far tonight. Served in the left field. It's a base hit. Fulby rounds third. They're going to hold him up right there. Varsho comes up throwing and all the way to serving. So the Yankees have the bases loaded. Nobody out. 
Yeah, you get that type of at bat from your nine, ninth hitter. Now you turn the lineup over with bases loaded. You've got an opportunity to really break this game wide open. Again, off of one of the game's better pitchers, Kevin Gosman. Pete Walker, the pitching coach, longtime pitching coach, has some words with Gosman. Remember, Gosman had shoulder fatigue, didn't throw a lot in spring training. And uh, you can see there's been a drop in velocity. Four seamers tonight, just over 90, just under 91. And on Sunday against the Rays, almost 95 miles an hour. Yeah, a ball up in the strike zone, Cabrera. Giant, just perfect hitting. So you see a lot of emotion so far, and it's so early in the year, but you know, the, the game, it doesn't take it away. The young kids, you look at Soto, Volpe, Cabrera, that show emotion day in and day out. It, it kind of drives the, drives the team. See, there's a four-seamer 92. He usually throws harder than that. The Blue Jays have to be concerned. And their their starters last year, they were all horses. They mm -hmm. all gave you over 30 starts. And are you, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul? Is that coming to roost here in uh, the second year? Pitching is so fragile, Paul. Yeah, seldom do you see a pitching staff, and, and they were third in baseball last year, ERA, ERA wise starters that just are healthy over here. The 0 2 just missed. Got that to 94. Volpe is at third, Wells at second, and Cabrera over at first. Nobody out, bottom of the second. Two and two. You know, one of the keys, Paul, they're laying off that splitter. I guess they're seeing him out of his hand. Well, another thing is when your velocity goes down, it's usually by, you know, your, your arm speed is not as good. And when your arm speed is not as good on your fastball, then your split finger, your breaking ball is not as crisp either. So, you know, the Yankees definitely seeing the ball well and staying off that split finger. Three and two, no place to put Torres. He did throw that 95 miles an hour. I've had so many baseball people tell me that even if your arm is bothering, and I'm not saying that's what the deal is with Gosman, you could still generate velocity. Mm -hmm. It's just the location that's gone. You don't throw it where you want. Well, he threw that one where he went right down the middle, 3 2. Glaber had a great swing, he just fouled it back. Exhausted. I mean, it's just pitch after pitch. You see 45 pitches so far without an out here in the second inning. And there's nobody out. And after throwing all these pitches to Labor, unless you get him to hit into triple play, oh yeah, Juan Soto's next. <laughs> Led the American League with 237 strikeouts last year, Gosman did. 33 years old. Oh, line drive. Left field, deep. Going back, Varsha. Still back on the track at the wall. He makes the play up against the wall. Volpe tags, he scores. Wells goes to third. A long sack fly by Torres, and it is 4 0 Yankees. Yeah, it's worth saying on a given night that ball is in the bullpen. A cold night, the ball doesn't quite carry as well. You know, Aaron Judge 
Stanton, they left the yard, but this ball was hit well to the deepest part of the ballpark. Cold air doesn't help. What could have been? Am I mm, that close to a grand slam. Here's Soto. First and third with one man out. Bottom of the second. Soto with an impressive walk in the first inning, and then Judge followed with a home run. That fly ball by Glaber Torres would have been a home run in 22 ballparks. That one gets away. Here comes Wells. The throw home, not in time. Moving to second is Cabrera, and the Yankees lead 5-0. chances if you're Wells. He got a better read than me. I didn't think this got away from Servin that far. Gosman got a late break also. Servin having a tough inning too as Gosman. And Juan Soto doing his job telling him to get down. 2-0 oh on Soto. The old inside move towards second. Cabrera gets back. Still no one man out. And it's 5-0 Yankees. scored on a pass ball that serving should have caught that. 3-0. Swinging on 3-0 and it's a base hit through the right side. Cabrera rounds third. He'll score easily. Soto's first hit in the Bronx. An RBI single. And the Yankees lead 6-0. Well, you couldn't have drawn it up any better. You've just uh, absolutely worn out one of the game's best pitchers. Here comes John Schneider. You knew this was going to happen. Fastball right there. Kind of came around it, but found the hole on the right side. Yankees up six to nothing. Not what you expected. Well, John Snyder takes the ball from Kevin Gosman. The Yankees very rarely get to him. They did today. Seven games against the Yankees coming in 1.17 ERA. Double what he's done previously tonight. Yankees Delta keep climbing. So Mitch White on a relief from Kevin Gosman. Six nothing Yankees. Soto's at first. Judge at the plate. Pitch outside. Well, the stat we showed you is he's walking off. He allowed six runs against the Yankees in his entire career. He allowed six runs tonight. The runner first is his responsibility. Stops at second. Judge picks up the second into the night. Aaron Judge, I mean, this is the adjustment that he can make because his arms are so long. He can reach that ball away. Watch how deep that's getting. All the way behind him almost and just shoots it to right field off the end of the bat. Another base hit, another RBI. Trade the bat for a hit right? uh, every time. So here's Rizzo, first and second, one out, six nothing Yankees. Line to second base, and they'll turn it into a double play. Rizzo hit it hard, Soto a little too far, and you score that four six to end the inning. But the Yankees get three more runs, three hits, a big error, and one man left on base. We played two in the Bronx, Yankee six. Toronto nothing. An MVP coming up next. Over the Blue Jays and 
I told you, I promised you an MVP, Paul, a two-time Super Bowl MVP. That man is Eli Manning. He joins us in the booth. Eli, how you doing? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks for having me in. Well, thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Pretty impressive beginning for the Yankees, right? Hey, unbelievable. This is uh, this has been fun. I brought um, I got two of my daughters with me, so their first time here for for a baseball game. It did not disappoint. Getting two home runs in the first inning, they are they're fired up and uh, a big second inning. So this has been great. Got a little football weather today, right? It is a little chilly. It's a little <laughs> chilly. I'm not doing a lot. Time to put the pads. Michael, you ever put the pads on in your life? <laughs> I couldn't get them over my head. Paul. <laughs> Set you up for that. That's good. They got the wraparounds now. You'll have to take over the side. You know, thank you. Maybe I'll, I'll revisit. <laughs> One and O count on Kiermaier. Now, Eli, obviously, you've been a longtime spokesman for the Great New York Toyota Dealers Association. They are a big sponsor of Yankee Baseball on Yes, so thank you for coming by, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's great to be here on behalf of uh, your local and Greater New York Toyota Dealers. Uh, they're doing a great thing tonight. They invited... Uh, Four families, so 19 total people from uh, WEDCO, which is Women Housing and Economic Development uh, Corporation, which uh, built a lot of houses in the Bronx, right around Yankee Stadium, and uh, supplied uh, a lot of you know great support for families on just the you know founded here 30 years ago on the simple plan of just uh, all people deserve to have a healthy community and to live in that community, and they do a lot of things for the family. So got to visit with them and, and take in the great game. That one is chopped over the mound, charging his ball. He bare hands, he can't get the ball cleanly, and Kiermaier will reach. Oh, that was Cabrero cut in front of Volpe. Yeah, another thing on a cold night, a little spin on the baseball, hands are cold. It's a little bit tougher. So that's a cool thing that Toyota's doing. So the families are here tonight, Eli? Families are here. So four families, uh, a lot of moms, dads, uh, some some kids. So got to uh, meet with them, take some pictures, uh, all, all in, a, in a suite. And uh, so it's been it's been fun to talk with them and just see, you know, hear a bit about the great work that uh, Wedco's doing, uh, the things they supply for their for their kids, uh, all the way from from academics to sports and arts and music. And uh, so it's it's obviously they're fired up to be here all local right in this area uh they're all big yankee fans so they're excited to be here tonight now we just took a shot of you in the booth and your daughters are in the background i, I think little charlie's gonna get upset right <laughs> he, you know he was scheduled to come he was scheduled to come we actually had charlie's uh first t-ball practice this morning he's five years old so it was chilly at eight o'clock this morning and uh, hit a couple other sporting events and he was worn out so uh had to call in call in the righty yeah. lucy lucy gladly took his place and, and came tonight instead uh, charlie will owe you one when it gets a little warmer right <laughs> exactly he'll come in august so he's more of a yeah warm weather he likes to sit outside get a hot dog he'll be fired up two one on springer he doubled in the first inning all right, so if you had a choice and you could push a button, Charlie becomes a superstar major league baseball player or a football player. It, you know, it doesn't matter to me. I, lo I love, you know, play, here we go. Here's a little picture. Look at right you. Ah. Nice <laughs> lefty. Lefty. I was say you were lefty. Lefty. Yeah. Batted lefty. And so we, we grew up playing all sports. I played basketball all through high school, played baseball through high school, uh, football, obviously. So, I, I, you know, I'm raising my kids the same way. Uh, Charlie's playing hockey. That's his first sport. He's playing oh, hockey. Really? He's playing t-ball. He's got flag football practice tomorrow. So he's he's playing everything. All our kids are involved in all the sports, and you know, hopefully they find something they're passionate about, they love, and just uh, you know, you just have a great uh, respect for all the sports. You can come watch to watch sports. You come to the games. I've been teaching my girls a bunch of the rules going on. We, I mean, we saw a catcher's interference tonight. We, <laughs> we saw a lot of things. I had a lot of explaining to do. <laughs> Isn't that Springer. the good old days, though, where, you know, you, you, depending on what season it was, you played it. You played baseball, you played football, you played basketball. Now they, a lot of these kids make up their mind at 12. They, they don't have the fun that we did. Right. Know? No, I 1,000% I, I uh, agree. I think it's about, you know, and, and I played all the sports, and you had different friends that played yeah. different sports. I had some that played baseball and basketball, some that played, you know, football and basketball, and some that did track or soccer. And so they played different sports. You got to be with them. You got to. You know, find out different different things, and it's all a different mentality. Like the baseball mentality is so different than the football. Just pre, uh, we got to go in the locker room today, and and you know, I, I thought about my locker room before, before a game. I never wanted to talk to anybody. I wouldn't take yeah. a picture over there. You know, you play 162 games. It's a little more loose, and got a picture with Judge and a few of the guys, and uh, it was great to 
go in there. Volpe's a you know, Jersey guy. Saw him play high school baseball. So I mean, a lot of these guys have I mean, you know known around and, and get to get to see with them. So it's I think you, the more sports you can play, the better. You know, speaking of the locker room, Michael, I don't know if you've seen it. I went in there yesterday. It, they made it. I mean, there's neon lights. There's, it's like a diner in there now. It's absolutely the only thing they don't have is a disco ball. I mean, it is unbelievable when you go in the Yankee lugout, uh, uh, clubhouse now. So Guerrero continues to struggle as he pops up to Cabrera. Now, that's the first out of the inning infield fly rule was called. You have to explain that to them, too, Eli. There we go. I'll have to go. Uh, you know, have to... <laughs> We'll have to go over that. Now, I'll tell you what, Eli. So I covered Paul his whole Yankee career here, and he was the last guy I thought would be a broadcaster. Now, we're sitting <laughs> together 23 years. Did you think you'd be a broadcaster? No, no. That's, you know, had no interest in, in being a broadcaster. I thought no chance, and then all of a sudden my brother calls me and says, I got an idea. Would you want to... That's foul. You want to, you know, sit in your sit in your basement, watch football, and make fun of me as we watch a couple of Monday night football games. I'm like, yeah, I could, I could do that. So that sounds easy. That, that sounds a lot better. You know, call a game how we would watch it if we were sitting on our couches. And you never know, Snoop Dogg might pop in every once in a while. That's what that's what happens when we watch football. Snoop Dogg just pops in our couch, and uh, so doing it that way. That's a base hit on a broken bat. The runner at second. Kiermaier had to hold up. So Soto gets in, and the bases are loaded for the Blue Jays with one man out. Well, the Blue Jays trying to get back into this game. And, you know, Michael, I thought you were busy. I mean, you've got shows, radio shows, other talk shows, everything. I don't know that the Manning brothers, they, they got their step up on you. They're busy. Everything. <laughs> no, we're, we're having fun. Uh, you know, still trying to get my I, Paul. I saw you with your shirt off the other day in, in, a, in a locker room. You're looking pretty strong. You miss, <laughs> so you're not busy enough to miss a workout. So you know what? We we met in a, in a golf tournament down in Florida. Right. And you know, we talked about playing golf in New York. And and now I got the thing. We're playing a Michael's caddy. There we go. He's got the Argyle sweater, the the knickers. He'll caddy for us. Well, can I drive a cart or I have to carry those bags? You gotta, you're carrying both of them right on your oh, back. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> so. I got 158 to a red pin. What club are you handing me? I have no clue. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, are you a good golfer, Eli? Uh, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I get get into it a little bit. I play more in the spring and the summer. But uh, I, I like to, you know, hang out with my brothers, hang out with my good, good pals, and get outside, you know, get my kids into it a little bit. So I, I, enjoy, uh, I enjoy playing my golf. Bases loaded. One out. Yankees lead 6 nothing. We're in the top of the third inning. The cleanup hitter Turner at the plate. Wraps one to left field. Right there is Verdugo. Tagging is Kiermaier. The throw is cut off. So it's a sack fly by Turner. First run for the Blue Jays. It's 6-1. I didn't think Verdugo had a chance there. But, you know, Michael, I didn't realize. Uh, he's rated one of the best arm strengths in all of baseball. I was anxious to see this throw. Really no chance. It looked like he kind of overthrew it. Sometimes you get off balance a little bit and just kind of tug it straight down. Not that I did that yesterday, Michael. Uh -huh, my no. pin. <laughs> did you see his first pitch? I you missed know? it. Oh, it's good. Good. I didn't miss much. It's not good. I no. saw Mattingly behind the plate, and I'm used to throwing it hard. It's the only way I can control the ball. And I saw him. I can't throw one hard. So I just threw one about 15 feet halfway to the plate. <laughs> That's the number one rule, right? If you're throwing out Hit the cutoff, man. Yeah. 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 Don't don't go short, right? You can't one hop it. Watch this. Oh, don't do it. Look at this. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. like 50 cents. I just wanted to see if Cap could still oh, pick it. You threw a ground ball? <laughs> well, he's a first baseman, right? <laughs> Here's the 0 1 to Vogelback. That's lofted into center field. Coming on is Judge. Hey, Eli, great All to right. see you, man. Thanks, guys. Be well. Appreciate it. Well, thank That's you, a man. great Eli Manning. Appreciate Blue Jays score one at 6-1 Yankees as we go to the bottom of the third inning here on Yes. Five stat overlay. Play along, win cash prizes, and earn Yes rewards to redeem for gift cards and gear. Download now, and remember that if you get Yes on TV, then you get the Yes app for free or sign up for a subscription. Really good guy. Eli Manning. They cut me off, Michael. Yeah, they've been meaning to do that. Uh, no way. Eli Manning left, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm the only other guy in here. Let's go. <laughs> 
Yeah, you talked about, I mean, quality people and people that are proud to be part of the New York sports thing, and Eli Manning fits the bill, right? Terrific guy. Good times, bad times, he was, he was always there. Gave Giant fans a lot of thrills. Clark Schmidt really minimized the damage, really. Uh, you know, the Blue Jays were kind of knocking on the door to try to really get back into this game. It kept him to just one run. The big inning for him. get at bat after at bat he's going to hit his home runs and you see how level his swing is that's why he's not a a guy that you would think that you know hits a ton of home runs but he just hits the ball so hard at times it leaves the yard high fly ball left center Kiermeyer will make the catch to retire for Dugo Volpe challenge replay brought to you by Citizens Made Ready. They punched him out in a strikeout, but then the Yankees said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. They challenged the play. They said, this catcher's interference. And I was looked at, and they said, you know what? It is. So he ended up taking first base, stole second, and ended up scoring on the side fly by Glaber Torres. Soft ground ball, second base. Clement goes to second one. That's all they'll get. over towards second makes a decision to go up against his body get the lead runner so here's Wells and there's the strike Wells walked and scored in the second inning he scored on a pass ball. Yankees lead 6 1. 1 and 1. Hey Michael, your breakdown coming into this series, opening day, you got Kikuchi throwing. Chances are you really think for a big offensive day, Gosman throwing today. Shut out yesterday. Six runs in the first two innings against one of the game's best pitchers. They say that's that's baseball, Susan. That's baseball, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> Here are threes for the Yankees in the first two. Good start to a poker hand. Not too bad. Twos and threes are wild. You yep. know. Line down the right field line. It's a foul ball. Six hits, Blue Jays have four. Swing and a miss. Wells down on strikes. No runs a hit. No errors and one man left. We played three at 6 1 Yankees. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if their $5 bet wins. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today. We go to the fourth inning. City looks great. Yankees lead 6-1. 
six to one. A rare Saturday night Yankee game in the Bronx. And Ernie Clement, who doubled his first time up, takes a strike. Howard has ripped down the left field line, and that ball is fair. And it bounces into the seats, and the Yankees have been unable to get Clement out. Yeah, home run yesterday, double to lead off the game, and now another double. He's uh, on a roll here at Yankee Stadium. Well, the talk in the Toronto is that they're going to have to find him playing time mm -hmm. because all he does is hit. Yeah, he hits lefties really well, but he's swinging the bat well against a good righty tonight in Clark Schmidt. So you're right. Uh, if you've got a bat that gets hits, you're going to be in the lineup. Here's Varsho. 1 0. There's a ground ball to second base. Clement moves to third, one down. All right, Michael, we got to really mind our P's and Q's here, you know? Why is that? I feel like I'm at school. Our boss is right behind my shoulder. It's oh, like, don't nervous. say anything wrong. That's right. Huh? You nervous? A little bit. Right. I keep peeking back there to see if he's moving. <laughs> if he stays here, it's going to be a long inning, you know that? Yeah, you, you really... Might say something wrong. No, no, you, you, you just quiet down when he's around. <laughs> Here's Servin. 0 and 1. He's sporting the new corduroy hat that you, yeah, that you sure. try to put on. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. Official Yankee corduroy hat. Fans believe me, it's cool. Go ahead and get one. It's good when it is cool. <laughs> there it is. That's genuine corduroy. That's what my uh, prom suit was made out of. Oh, really? Light I, I saw it the big wide yeah. Pals, yeah. Be beautiful. Went with my afro. Neville's Farrah Fawcett do. It was, it was nice. Good times, huh? Yes, yes. Now, was that a hand-me-down from one of your brothers? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it was pinned in the back. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> One two, just off the end of the bat foul. And they're giving Kirk the night off with Servin playing. Danny Jansen broke a, a small bone on his wrist. He's usually the backup catcher. He should return in a couple weeks. Two and two. Blue Jays have five hits, Yan Yankees have six. It's 6 1, New York. Three and two. Yankees cannot be lulled into complacency because mm -hmm. 6 1 is not a runaway victory. You got to get outs. And Boone would like some length out of Schmidt. And then Servin works a walk. I mean, you're one loud swing away from the Blue Jays being right there again. Yeah, that, and those are the outs that frustrate you as a manager. Is ball four to the backup catcher, Brian Servin, who has yet to have a hit this year. Those are the guys that, you know, you've got to put away as a pitcher. Well, Schmidt will say, see, I did put him away. Mm -hmm. There was a hesitation in Servin. I don't know that he knew that was a ball or a strike. So first and third, one man out. Here is Kevin Kiermeyer. Slow roller toward third, a base hit. That was in the third inning. One and oh. Foul away. 
you know, if you look at that swing right there, Michael, that's almost what I was talking about, about Volpe. You know, it, that ball, the, the bat just gets in the strike zone. See, it's really not a swing, but you're able to, to foul it off that way. That's why I think that, you know, it was a great call. It has to be catcher's interference, even though Volpe didn't make a complete swing. One and two on Kiermaier. Kiermaier played his first season with Toronto last year and came back on a one-year $10.5 million deal. Now he played with the, uh, the Rays for the beginning of his career and you know then he plays with Toronto last year he said I never thought I'd play on turf again so I blame the players it's too much fun I love these guys and here in Toronto treated me like a king last year mm -hmm. four time gold glove winner platinum glove winner in 2015 2 2 sky the other way and out of play. If you're Clark Schmidt to save that run, you're really looking for a strikeout. Even a ground ball, Kiermaier being left-handed with good speed, it'd be very tough to double him up. Three and two. Schmidt's really working himself into a mess. One pitch away from loading the bases. And so early in the game, he was putting the lefties away with cutters in on their hand. Now he's having a little trouble getting break on that. He's kind of leaving them up and away. Might have something to do with gripping the baseball on a cold night. Three two. Chop slowly towards second. Labor gets one. That's all they'll get. Allowing a run to score. So Clement scores and now it's 6-2. The Yankees. Well, if you're Clark Smith, you got an out. Now you've got to, to finish this inning off. And if you're the Toronto Blue Jays, this is how you tack on runs, is by putting the ball in play and not getting strikeouts for the man on third base and adding another run on the board. So here is Springer, double and a walk. And there's a base hit through the left side. Kiermaier will stop at second. And now the Blue Jays have even the Yankees up in hits at six. The Yankees still lead by four, and that brings up Guerrero Jr. This would be a really good time. Again, a, a ball that kind of backs up and not a good break on it. And Clark Schmidt is so good at spinning the ball away from the righties. It'd be a good time for Anthony Rizzo. Wells Blake, you know, just to calm him down. Realize where you are. You're one out, one out for getting out of this inning, still having a four-run lead. Yeah, and this is the time and pitch count that he starts to run into trouble. You see how the numbers jump. And you know, with Guerrero, it's just a matter of when. You know, he's five for thirty-one. Just too good a player to struggle like this. Fly ball into center field. Judge is there, puts it away. So the Blue Jays score a run on two hits and they leave two. Go to the bottom of the fourth. And set with the Blue Jays. Coverage begins at 12.30 with Audi batting practice today in the pregame. With first pitch scheduled for 1.30 on Yes and the Yes app. And remember, if you get Yes on TV, then you get the Yes app for free. Or sign up for a subscription. Pitch to Oswaldo Cabrera as a strike as we start at the bottom of the fourth inning. Yankees lead 6 2. They knock Kevin Gosman out of the game in the second inning. That one is sliced just foul. We talk about another guy earlier. I mentioned that Stanton, every time he gets a hit, it's, it's going to have a little more confidence. When you look at Cabrera and the start that he got off to, how much confidence he has as a hitter now compared to where he was when he was kind of lost early in the year last year. Hitting 370, two home runs, seven ribbies. 
Getting his opportunity with the injury to DJ LeMahieu. Michael, you mentioned DJ LeMahieu. He was actually in the clubhouse today. He said he took batting practice on the field the other day in Tampa. He'll be with the team for a little bit now. He's going to up the baseball activity this week, do some more defensive drills, maybe run the bases a little bit, and then there'll be a conversation at the end of the week as long as everything goes okay to see what the time frame is going to look like. He said he feels like he's getting closer, but not quite there yet, Michael. And it's, it's uh, so unfortunate he got hurt, Meredith, because everybody's talking about how he looked like he had life in his game in spring training before that foul ball that he looked like he was about to have a good year. No doubt about it. And he was one of the guys that was down in Tampa very, very early trying to get himself right for the season. That's a nice play by Guerrero and a good play by Mitch White getting over to beat Cabrera to the bag. Yeah, it was a better play for Guerrero because White had a late break and he threw a bullet to him. See? Yep. Yep. Great call. Can I say great call by Angel Hernandez? Absolutely. All right. I was just wondering what was going to go on tonight. Angel's got to get on camera for well, something. Well, no, he'll be the home plate umpire tomorrow. Oh, Don't boy. Worry. You saving up? Yes. Here's Glaber Torres. All for one and a sack fly. The sack fly. Oh, so close to being a grand <laughs> slam. Bases loaded, nobody out, and he drove Varsho all the way to the 399-foot sign in left center. Warmer day, he's trotting. So, you know, I didn't even notice. Is a grand slam still just to see you, or you had a little bit to it? No, no, just to see you. See you? Yeah. Grand slam afterwards, right? Probably, yeah. Okay. Right. I'm going to tune in next time. <laughs> Hope you're sitting right next to me. <laughs> Ground ball a third, backhanded by Turner, the long throw. Oh! Here we go. Name that Yankee time. Who is this Yankee? Two All-Stars, 1,108 hits, 203 stolen bases. So he played for the Yankees 78-79. Then a long stretch with the Blue Jays, one year with the Braves, and finished it up with the Expos. Who's that Yankee? Name that Yankee. And name that in three notes, Michael. You think so? <laughs> no, not at this point. I gotta tell you, I, I, I missed the trivia because I'm not good at this. I'm not wired the right way to do this. Yeah. Boom got this in one second. Oh, really? Yeah. And then it, you know, makes you feel less than human, you know? Now, you see the, the corner number there? The higher the number, the more difficult the uh -huh. people that put the quiz together think it is. So this is an eight. That means it's pretty hard. Yeah, the, the Randy Johnson was a one, I think. Okay. That's why I got it right. <laughs> High fly ball left field on the run. Varsho. I, I think uh, I think it's going to be a tough year for both of us. Yes. But as long as we, we ride it together, then we're all right. You know what? I'm almost, we've done this so long, I almost want a couch up here. After Eli Manning talked about sitting on a couch with his brother, it's me and you up here with a couch. Hey, listen, you had two years of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was in the basement by myself, though. Ground ball softly to second. There's Clement, and that'll do it as the Yankees go down in order. One, two, three. We're going to the fifth. Six, two Yanks. Brought to you by Montefiore Einstein, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. This is terrible for baseball. Spencer Strider, such a great pitcher, MRI revealed UCL damage in the right elbow. That usually might be Tommy John. Shane Bieber had two great starts. He's going to undergo Tommy John out for the year. Yuri Perez of the Marlins undergo Tommy John out for the season. It's, it's an epidemic, and it's not good for the game. And it's not good for these players. And Chris Bassett has come out and said somebody in Major League Baseball thought it was more important to throw 97 than 91, and I'm sorry, you can't throw that hard all the time and not have elbow injuries. It's going to happen, and, I mean, it's it's unbelievable how many, how many pitchers are on the I.L. Well, there, there's some truth to it. You know, obviously, the human, bo the human body is meant for so much torque or so much speed or so much strength, and, you know, you surpass that, and, and, and things happen. 
mean, they go to different places all around the country in the winter to increase their velocity. They just want to throw as hard as they can, mm -hmm. can for as long as they can, and, and the body gives out. Never saw a knuckleballer get Tommy John, did No, you? no. Three one to Bichette. There's a strike. Luke Weaver. Foul back. Bichette one for two. He's gotten off to a slow start. He's four for twenty seven. On deck is Justin Turner. You're talking about a slow starter. Here's a guy that led the American League in 2021 and 2022 in hits. 558 since 2021, most in the American League. So, you know, you know he's going to hit. It's just, uh, you know, when you start the season, obviously slow. The numbers, they don't lie. We talked about the scoreboard yesterday. And when you look up and you're hitting 050, it's, it's just not good. Outside to Turner, one and zero. Yeah, you got to believe, and you can see Clark Schmidt really kind of struggling control-wise. That you know, possibly the I'll talk about the cold weather. He he spins the ball so much with the cutter and the slider and the sinker that you know it, it, it might be affecting him because he really looked good. You know, once he got out of that first inning, he really looked good for a couple innings. Last couple innings has really struggled with command. One and two. As soon as I say that, he throws a perfect pitch. Look at this two seamer right under the hands. Not much you could do with it. Sack fly as last time up. So you see Turner playing at 39, and you, you bagged it at 36. What were you thinking? Uh, you know what I'm thinking? I've been watching his at bats this, this whole series. I mean, it's only two games in, but I mean, every one of them. He, 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 you can tell he knows what a pitcher's trying to do to him. He's fouled off tough pitches. And finally, Bertrand puts him away with the good ball off the plate away. Again, I think Aaron Boone going to the bullpen and out shy of finishing, or two outs shy of finishing the fifth. We did it to Luis Hill, one out shy. Wins don't mean anything for starting pitchers anymore. Wins for teams, that means something. So, Schmidt's done. By Bet365, whatever the sport, whatever the moment, it's never ordinary at Bet365. And by Buick, visit your local Tri-State Buick dealers. Some of the great pictures around Yankee Stadium. As Clark Schmidt, class is in session with Garrett Cole. As he gives the Yankees four and a third. As Paul mentioned, two outs shy of qualifying for a win. So Luke Weaver will take over, and he'll deal to Daniel Vogelback. And a strike. So far, Luke Weaver has picked up two wins. Three and two third innings of pitching. One of the guys out of the pen that will give the Yankees length. And quickly 0-2 on Vogelback.
pretty big crowd for a Saturday. I feel like Billy Joel. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it just it it seems weird. I mean, mm -hmm. From playing here and now doing the announcing, you just are not accustomed to being here at seven o'clock on a Saturday night. Huh? It's a little different. I'm sure you know the Yankees have done the research, and their fans like the Saturday afternoon games more. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned why this is a Saturday night game, so they could have played a day night doubleheader if the opener was rained out. One and two on Daniel. You know, one of the knocks on Vogelback when he was with the Mets is he, he didn't swing enough. He just took ball after ball. He was looking to walk a lot. Swings at that one and tips it into the glove of Wells. Two left. Hey, you watch Vogelback. He's looking to do one thing, and that's to get around the ball and try to hook it into the seats. Watch the path of his bat come around the baseball a little bit. You could just see there's one thing on his mind, especially here in Yankee Stadium, is that to launch one into the seats. Clement takes up and away, 1 0. One and one. Check swing, he does not go two and one. And we were talking about what a series Clement had, and he really opened some eyes last year. As you see him check this swing. 52 to plate appearances last year with the Jays. He hit 380. It kind of opened the eyes that, you know, we need to get this guy in. Plays a lot of second, a lot of third, plays shortstop. And once in a while, a corner outfield. But uh, yeah, he talked about getting his bat in the lineup. The Jays are trying to do it. White faced. One on one. White's twenty nine years old, fifth big league season. Jay's got him in the 2022 right at the deadline from the Dodgers.
you know, from being with the Dodgers, he said he, he learned a lot from Clayton Kershaw. Kershaw, a veteran, doesn't love all the numbers, doesn't love Extronic and Rapsodo or the technical side, so he talked to him about approach and reading hitters. Mm -hmm. I guess there has to be a happy meeting for that. I mean, the Yankees love having Andy Pettit around for that very reason. Yeah, and, and Andy Pettit really, you know, breaks it down to how to get hitters out. He doesn't care about a break, but doesn't care about how you do it, but he'll show you ways to do it. And, you know, analytics are great, but they're, you know, it, there is another part of the game, and it is. It's reading hitters. It's it's a feeling, uh, you know, and, and for managers to see that, uh, I, I think it's kind of coming back to the guy. I don't think it's based on just numbers as much as it was a couple of years ago. Judge walks the Audi electric moment. Experience the Formula Electric Audi vehicle at your local Tri-State Audi dealer today. Here's the formula. Take a lot of pitches. Soto walks. Judge goes to school on that and then connects for a long two-run home run. That'll work in every first inning for the Yankees and then later on in the inning going the other way using the short porch. Stan gets a home run up the top of the wall and that is indeed an electric moment. Get your money's worth on the electric moment tonight, huh? Three highlights, a walk, and a couple home runs. Not too bad. Rizzo lined into a double play in the second. He's 0 for 2. 1 and 1 on Anthony. First 24 and now three hits tonight. Susan, that's baseball. <laughs> So with that one hit, he went from 192 to 222. That's why early on, 
You can climb out of some holes. You just don't want it to be that deep. Watch Anthony Rizzo. The ball was inside, but he's so quick because he's used to opening up because he's right on top of the plate. And then you just hope you did not hook it foul just inside the foul pole. Single by Stanton, his 500th hit with the Yankees. Right to Bichette, there's one. And there's two. So Verdugo bangs into a 6 6 3 double play. And that'll bring up Volpe. Volpe reached on a catcher's interference and then wrapped in a 4-6 force. One and one. We're in the fifth inning. Yankees eight and the Blue Jays two. A middle game of this three-game set. Yankees with three home runs in this game. They didn't have an extra base hit in yesterday's game. One and two on Volpe. strikes two outs Mitch White winds kicks and deals spoiled the other way and out of play as I look at that foul ball Michael I, I still I'm a little mad at you because you let me say port authority where the parts authorities is for, for like five years Finally, you said that doesn't say Port Authority. I'll let you be you. Yeah. yeah. It's important. Sometimes it doesn't work. You know, you got to get corrected. I'll let you, you. you. <laughs> Now, we'll, we'll read the signs together if, yeah. if the game goes long. All right. And the three two. Still three and two. All right, so this one is Delta. Oh, that one I got. All right. I'm on a lot, matter of fact. <laughs> three two. Strike three. Hope he thought that was outside. But Anthony Rizzo goes the short play right down the right field line. Little Bobby English inside the pole. A two-run home run. Yankees lead. Mm -hmm. 
Man named after you, hitting 342. O'Neill Cruz. Yeah, I like that. Did you notice, though, uh, we had uh, Meredith had him on, and then we kind of zoomed years ago, and it's spelled with one L. Though. Yes. But that's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll take the compliment. Uh, you definitely should. Like Varsho flies out the judge. It's, it, it's not like you'd say, you know, what the L. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's just still the name. Let's go around the majors. Yamamoto today against the Cubs. Five innings, three hits, two walks, eight strikeouts. Michael Conforto playing very well this season, the early going. Eight games, 419. And Adolis Garcia. Four homers and ten ribbies in seven games for the Rangers this season. I tell you what, looking back, Michael, you're looking at Conforto's numbers, and it's just like there was nothing better than getting off to a great start. It just... He had such a great hope for the year that, oh, this is going to be one of those magical years. Other than, you know, you get off to a bad start and you feel like you're digging yourself out of a hole all year. And I think it's a, as an individual player and also teams. You know, a team gets off to a great start. It's just like things are going to go well. One and two on Serban. Blue Jays in the middle of a 10-game season-opening road trip. There have been uh, renovations to the Rogers Center, and they wanted to make sure that everything was done before they headed home. That's why they started them off on this long trip. And Servin gets plunked by Luke Weaver. Three teams have not played a home game yet. Cleveland, they have the home opener on Monday. Toronto has their home opener on Monday. And Boston mm -hmm. has its home opener on Tuesday. Well, Servin's had a tough night behind the plate. Ball's all over the place, and now it's plunked in the thigh. Very close to a lot more painful. Yeah, it could have been worse. Yep. You know, you open the season on the road, and you and you don't, like, get crushed. That's good. Oh, yeah. Because you got 10 games now out of 81 off the schedule. And it, the travel comes late in the year, becomes harder because you get tired. And, you know, you look at starts of players. I mean, you got the Marlins coming in Monday. They're 0 and 9 right now. Yep. That, that's hard to get back from. When you guys won everything in 98, you opened on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Now, you didn't start great at 1 and 4, but you got those games out of the way. Right. I always love to start on the West Coast. Get a trip out of the way. You know it's warm weather. You know, you're not worried about um, the year we were in Cleveland. It got snowed out. It's just like, you know you're going to be playing baseball. Hey, check out and follow Yes Network on TikTok for more content. we got to start dancing if we're doing TikTok, Michael, me and you. If you want. Yeah. Yeah. we got to, what's your song, Buttercup or something, though, right? I've done some TikTok videos with my daughter. <laughs> Very nice. Dribbled slowly to Rizzo. He fires to second, and he gets the force on Servin. But Rizzo has unerring um, thoughts on every single throw he makes a second. I was just going to say his clock knew that, uh, you know, he, he took his time. He knew he was going to get one out out of it. No double play. Never even looked at the runner going down first base. Just went to second base, got that lead runner. And he threads the needle, too. He'll yeah. throw right across over his shoulder. Doesn't ever seem to hit the runner. Springer with a fly ball to fairly deep right, but Soto's there, puts it away, and that'll do it. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left at the bottom of the sixth. Means it's time to name that Yankee. All right, All Star twice, 1,108 hits, stolen bases 203. You see the teams he played for, and the answer is Damaso Garcia. Wow. Now he was stuck behind Willie Randolph as a second baseman. Yankees used him as part of a deal. I got Rick Cerrone from the Blue Jays to the Yankees when the Yankees tragically lost Thurman Munson in 1979. Cerrone came over. And did a really good job behind the plate. But uh, DeMasso was a big part of that trade. 1-0 on Wells. 
Mitch White still in there. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. I've also heard him call Damaso. Mm -hmm. Pretty good player. That's a tough place to, to be a, a second baseman in the American League at that time, Michael. I mean, you had Frank White, you had Willie Randolph. I mean, you had some superstars. You know, borderline Hall of Famers, Lou Whitaker. I mean, it's just there were some great players. Pretty cool story. In, in 1984, Garcia made the All-Star team. See Tim Mesa warming up, and he brought his double play partner as his guest, who did make the All-Star game, Alfredo Griffin. Oh wow! High fly ball, deep left center. Kiermaier backs up, makes the play. Oh, we got more music. Oh, here is the trade. So the Yankees got Cerrone and Tom Underwood and an outfielder, Ted Wilborn. They sent Chris Chambliss, Domicel Garcia, and Paul Mirabella to the Blue Jays. And we bring back the music our fans love from the trivia last year. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, so he brings Alfredo Griffin as his guest to the 84 All-Star Game, which is a nice thing to do, double play partner. Driven into left center field. Varsho is there to retire Cabrera. Well, Alan Travel got hurt the day before the game. And because Griffin was in San Francisco, oh, what? he made the team. And by making the team, it kicked in his All-Star bonus. Oh, my goodness. That's that's a good story. It's like one of those American Idol things where yes. they send them home and then they, they bring them back. And that's right. They still make it. Here's Glaber Torres. Well, Mitch White's taking one for the team here with a very short outing by by Gosman. They don't want to use up the whole bullpen. So he has given them some length pitching two outs into the sixth. Now with Soto on deck, they probably bring in Mesa to face Soto. So if he wants to give them this inning, he probably has to get Torres. So 3 and 0 on Glaber who's 0 for 2 with a sack fly. There's a strike. So Glaber works a walk. Let's see. Here comes John Snyder, and he's going to take the ball from White and bring in Mesa. So White came on to get the final two outs of the second. He picks the third, fourth, fifth, and two outs into the sixth. And now Soto reading up on Mesa. SUV of the Yankees. So they bring in Tim Mays. This will be his fifth game, and he's going to face Juan Soto. It was a great story today in The Athletic by Britt Giroli, and she wrote about, you know, Soto's journey from the Nationals to the Padres, and his first couple months with the Padres, go go to the, you know, pre-series meetings, and he'd be, have an iPod, you know, in his head, you know, mm -hmm. headphones, whatever, wasn't listening. He does not want to know a lot of information. He wants to react to the pitch. Ear pods, I'm sorry. Thank you. He just wants to react to the pitch. He doesn't want to be overloaded with information mm -hmm. about what a pitcher is going to throw. And the Padres thought like he was not paying attention, but right. he wanted to block that stuff out. You know what? Uh, I've talked to Derek Jeter many times. We look fastball down the middle every single pitch. And then when you start trying to get into the pitcher's mind, what he's, you've taken away your biggest strength as a hitter, and that's just to see the ball and react to it. Runner goes. 
No throw. The ball blocked there by Servin. So Torres with a stolen base. It was kind of a cheat team there who off and running. No chance. First move with a lefty. Two outs. So Soto with a walk and an RBI single and a ground out to second. That one's lined in the right field. That's going to get in there for a base hit. Torres rounds third. He's coming home. The throw is cut off. Hits an RBI single for Soto. And the Yankees lead 9-2. I love to see the stolen base really prevalent in the game again, and this is what it could do. You get a stolen base, you know, one of the game's better hitters up there, base hit to right field, another run. Juan Soto, I mean, uh, good swing, bad swing, he can still hit. Really spreads out, kind of hits off that back leg. You see that top hand take over a little bit, and that's probably why he was kind of shaking his head. I'll tell you what, anytime you can drive in a run, it's a good thing. They do not call that a strike on Judge in the count 1-0. and and That just goes to show you, I mean, how many times in the past are you going to see Juan Soto, lefty or righty, just ball four with the first base open. Gleyber Torres on second base, two outs. But we got Aaron Judge hitting behind you that already hit a home run tonight. Juan Soto's going to get pitches that he hasn't seen in the years past. Two and one on Judge. Judge had a perfect night. He's two for two. Two on home run in the first single in the second. Walked and scored in the fifth. Two and two on Judge. Judge fouls it back. Nine two Yanks. And Judge will work a walk. This perfect night continues. Take a look at the three Yankee home runs on StatCast 3D by Google Cloud. Well, you're hitting off pretty much all parts of the park. Right down the line, right center, and then left center with Aaron Judge at 425 feet. So get three of those little uh, spaghetti strands going in the seats. You usually got the lead, right? You usually win games, yep. Here's Anthony Rizzo. Mesa deals a strike. Soto is on second. Judge is on first. High fly ball. Left center. Kiermaier will put it away and that'll do it. Yankees one run one hit and two men left. Let's go to the seventh. Giveaway that was rained out has been rescheduled for Saturday, April 20th. So come see the Yankees take on the Rays and the first 18,000 guests in attendance are going to receive an Aaron Judge number 62 bobblehead. The second of a two-part collectible set courtesy of TikTok. Tickets are going fast, so get yours today at Yankees.com. The giveaway is supposed to be Friday, September 22nd. Rained out. And the bobblehead has an interlocking base that'll match up with the Roger Maris number 61 bobblehead that was given out last season. Luke Deeper still in there. He deals to Guerrero. Weaver is the pitcher of record for the Yankees. The starter, Clark Schmidt, lasted one out into the fifth inning, so not eligible for a win. I've given this some thought. I wonder what you think. The game has changed. All right. You're looking at my thought bubble right now because I'm thinking the same thing. Are they going to change the rules? Fly ball right field. That ball is gone off the bat of Guerrero. 9 3. Well, Guerrero's had some at bats that could have changed this game with men on base. You know, he's going to hit his home runs. 
At least that, uh, you know, this is a solo. Well, that's a lot of stuff to remember when I'm around the bases. It's also a lot of stuff to do when you're down by six runs. Yes, yeah, I was kind of noticing the same thing. I mean, you're doing like a, some kind of dance between second and third. You're down 9-3. I mean, place and time for everything, man. Uh, I, I, I'm glad you're seeing things as <laughs> the way I am. Wow. Yeah, but back to your point, Michael. Were you going to say that possibly change it to four innings? Right, because if like it, it doesn't matter, and it does matter to the pitcher, so you're taking away victories from them. It should change. The game has changed. If, if a pitcher gives you six innings, you celebrate yes. now. Yes, yes. What's the scenario where the, it's up to the official score to award somebody a win? Right, but always the starter has to go five to okay. be awarded the win. They can't get a win uh, pitching less than five innings, fewer than five innings. I mean, that, that rule, okay, when Tom Seaver and Bob Gibson were doing complete games, I get it. Mm-hmm. Well, again, I mean, it's a matter of time for Guerrero puts up the numbers he's accustomed to having. And it's, uh, you know, he's off to a slow start. But he's always hit the Yankees well. Shush. Uh, you're down by six. <laughs> you shush. <laughs> Sit down. Wow. He's a great player, but I, I don't get that. You know, the, the word on Guerrero, he does it every home run. That's his thing. But, you know, you, you change your thing when you're yeah. down by six runs. I guess you can't mess with it. You know, that's his thing. Hey. Now, here, here's the un, unfair nature of the of the rule with a win. The starting pitcher go four and two-third innings, not allow a run. Can't get a win. A relief pitcher can come in, get one out, get a win. Right. Uh -huh. Make it make sense for me. Yeah, I can't. I'm over here writing things down. They're still not going to make sense to me. <laughs> Line drive. It's a base hit. Pass to Lunging Cabrera. That's going to go into the corner. Digging it out there is Verdugo. He'll fire into second, but not in time to get Bichette. The second hit of the night. Oh, this is back-to-back -back good swings off a of Weaver. Oh, a little sink, but not enough. Bichette, uh, you said, you know, he, he led the league in hits two year, consecutive years, so he's, he's used to doing stuff like this. You know, you mentioned Tom Seaver, and it just, I, I saw a post from Johnny Bench today that Pat Zach yeah. passed away, and he was a big part of that, that Tom Seaver deal. Mm -hmm. and it was in February, you lost Don Gullett, so two of the big red machine pitchers, Don Gullett ended up being with the Yankees in the World Series, too. And became a very good pitching coach. Mm -hmm. Thirty-one pitches so far for Luke Weaver. Twenty-two strikes. Maybe Weaver is tiring because he doesn't like the same pitcher he's been in the last two innings. Now you don't have anybody warming in the bullpen because Weaver is supposed to give them length. You know, stretch that as a starting pitcher in spring training. Two and one on Justin Turner. And I've asked David Cohn if you know if you are struggling on the mound and you know you're you're looking at the finish line. If you do peek over your shoulder to see if anybody's up in the bullpen or you know, nobody's up, it's like oh, I'm going to bear down here. No, there's no help out there. Two and two. The noise here in the background. Crowd doing the wave.
It's a good way, Mike. This crowd is, is they're on top of everything in there. I know you're not a fan, but they, that was a pretty good wave going around. Listen, Paul, I just want people to be happy. Yeah? Yeah, I don't pass judgment anymore. Except for me? No, no, I want you to be happy, too. I know you're happy sitting here with me. Absolutely. Although Saturday night's a big date night for you and Evan, <laughs> you know. <laughs> There's a table for two that's empty tonight. Well, I, the way I'm keeping score, I thought that was ball four. Um, this, oh, it is. Uh, I guess Turner didn't want to walk. <laughs> He's seen the ball pretty good. <laughs> I'm sure he wasn't waiting to see if that was a strike. <laughs> Grill knew. Well, Matt Blake will come out and talk with Luke Weaver. And it looks like there's some story in the Yankee bullpen. It'll be uh, Victor Gonzalez. Oh, I remember those things, Michael. Those are those little hot packs. You, you, oh, look at that. That's a trick. That guy can do everything. You put those in your back pocket. There's like black, uh, like powder in them, and you rub them together, and they stay warm pretty much the whole game. Skiers use them, right? I don't know. But this is pretty impressive. <laughs> I have fun playing baseball or what? To be that good, you should. Yeah. Here's Vogel back. Did he go? No, he did not. Oh, good guy right here to try to keep on the ground, obviously. Good double play guy. If you can get a ground ball to one of your middle infielders or keep it in the infield. Weaver's having trouble throwing strikes. 2-0. frustrates players if you look around at the Yankee outfielders the infielders I mean I mean you've you've put up the numbers now you just want to get outs get ready for tomorrow this is when you start standing in cold weather that you get frustrated as an everyday player three and one This year, he's played very good defense. Here's Clement. The Yankees have the bases uh, second and third for the Blue Jays, and they have their infielders back. Clement with a couple of doubles already. 
has been really been the toughest out in the lineup. His first two games, the pinch hit yesterday, the big home run, and a couple doubles tonight. Second and third, nobody out. Yankee lead is five. Oh, and two. Upstairs, one and two. High fly ball. Not a good run in. Judge makes the catch, tagging and scoring is Turner. Vogelbach stays put at second. Sack fly for Clement, and it's 9-5 Yankees. And here comes Aaron Boone, so that's going to be the end of the night for Weaver. Rough inning for Weaver. Leaves a runner at second base with one out. Yankees will call on the lefty Victor Gonzalez with Varsho coming up. Yankees still up. a month to the Tunnel to Towers Foundation at T2T.org. Look at that, huh? That's a pretty, pretty nice city. That's not even a doctored up picture. That's just real. That's real. That's real life. All right. Uh, you see Gonzalez's number. You got to tell me something, Michael. This has to be a mistake. What? What's in the news last night? And they were talking about the earthquake. Mm -hmm. And they said, yeah, there's over a million buildings in Manhattan. Uh, be a million buildings. I, 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 that sounds like a lot. Yeah, I think they misquoted or, or missed a decimal point or something. Right? <laughs> a million buildings. That wow. I don't know. I don't think so. David Schneider is pinch hitting for Varsho. Now they they might be counting all the homes in the Bronx and Queens and Staten Island and Brooklyn. Wow, James has said one million buildings, including all five boroughs. Right, so you were thinking of Manhattan. It's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, it's all five boroughs. Yeah. Still a million's a lot. A lot of people. I mean, Cincinnati, we got six. <laughs> right. <laughs> Two and one on the pinch hitter, Schneider. Runner at second, one man out. We're in the seventh. It's 9 5. The Yankees over the Blue Jays in the middle game of this three game set. Two and two. Against lefties, Davis Schneider hits 314. Righties, 234. Three and two. Yankees are inviting the Blue Jays to get back in this game. This is like uh, a few years ago before the rule changes. You know, you're closing in on three hours and you, you can't get out. Alejandro Kirk will pinch it for serving. He assumes he's going to first base and then he's sort of go back in the middle of the baseline. 
I mean, Paul could tell you this better than I can. You don't advance when a ball hit in front of you, and that was hit way in front of him. Yeah, when you're down four runs in the seventh inning, it's base to base. I mean, you know what? Major leagues, little leaguers, you make mistakes sometimes. Here's Kirk. And there's a ground ball to second. The flip to second, and that will do it. And Gonzalez comes on and does a nice job. But the Blue Jays do score three runs. They leave one on base at the end of six and a half innings of play. The Yankees are up in this one, but we'll stay right here as they honor America here in the Bronx. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your caps and direct your attention to the area behind home plate as the New York Yankees welcome an honored military guest, United States Army Captain. Anthony Kokomo from Wyckoff, New Jersey, who served in Operation Iraqi Freedom. The Yankees say thank you for your sacrifice and service to our nation. And now, Robert Merrill's rendition of God Bless America. Stretch time, so please join in and sing along as Yankee Stadium organist Ed Alstrom plays. Take for the Yankees, five nine and one for the Blue Jays. Gosman lasted one out into the second, and he has really pitched great against the Yankees in his career. Guerrero with a home run, Clark Schmidt one out into the fifth, and Aaron Judge having a big night. Hard throwing Nate Pearson in for the Blue Jays. Schneider takes over in left field. And Kirk behind the plate with the new pitcher being Pearson. And there's a strike to Stanton. Stanton, three hits tonight. Ground ball to third. Turner. One away here in the seventh. Did somebody turn the fan on up here? All of a sudden the wind's cold and it's blowing in here. Huh? Want to share my scarf with me? Yeah, that'd be great. Kind of, well, it's a long scarf. Right. Will that help my voice? It might, yes. I got to tell you, I like that chain. Now there's gold and diamonds in there. That is a beautiful chain. It's funny. We did see the, the replay of Verdugo on the road, and I, I think you're right. I think he has platinum and road. Yeah, platinum road, gold home. Yeah, home and road jewelry. It's pretty cool. But I, I think the diamonds are overwhelming the gold there, so I, I'd call that a diamond necklace. I didn't get a chance to see him today, but I will ask him, you know, why Platinum Road? All right. I'll be here early tomorrow to get the info. Oh, good. Oh, we're 135 tomorrow, right? Yes, we are. Oh, little day game. 
Guys, he has some more chains hanging in his locker. He can't wear them all out there, including the big 24 chain encrusted with diamonds. And somebody asked him whether or not he's ever going to wear that in the game. And he said, only if I have a really good dentist, because if that thing hits you the wrong yeah. thing, and I got some teeth. Exactly. But I want to call, I'll find out exactly wow. how he decides what chain to go with on a daily basis. Yeah, if you're hanging those things in your locker, you, you trust the guys around you, right? I would hope so. They're his teammates. <laughs> Maybe I don't trust a guy. I don't think I'd hang a denim jacket in here. You know what? We used to have valuable boxes. Now I guess you just hang them in the locker. Well, he might lock it up when he goes on right. the field. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm only allowed in there, Paul, during certain times. Hey, i tell you one thing. Are you as impressed as I am? When I, I took a little road trip yesterday down in the locker room, I mean, they've got a new diner. they got neon lights. It is absolutely beautiful for Look, the Yankees clubhouse. Looks great so far. Now, Paul, I don't know if you believe this. You're allowed places that I am not allowed, so you probably have an even better look at yeah, what's going like, on in there. Like, like the they, shower room or stuff like that? I, I would assume behind the curtain <laughs> where I'm not allowed to go, the rest of the media are not allowed to go. You can go because you have a plaque out there in Monument Park. Oh. That one is lined to Bichette. Tries to get the double play, but Verdu goes back. So two way. So you think that retired number gets him in the areas that we can't get into, Meredith? Huh? I think so. Yeah, you're probably right. I think wearing the uniform probably gets you some more access. I don't know. Every once in a while, somebody asks, "Where are you, where are you going?" <laughs> Up to see Michael K and Meredith. Oh, all right, you got, you're good. Wells with a fly ball to left field. Schneider on the run and sliding try by Turner. He can't get there. Good attempt by the veteran. Well, when you're 39, you'll feel this in the morning. A long run and then a slide on the warning track. I've said it before, that dirt's a little bit harder than the regular infield. Ouch. Oh, got him on the thigh. They whiffed it. Makes the play to retire Wells, and that'll do it. Yankee strand one in the seventh. We're going to go to the eighth inning. Let's get $200 in bonus bets if your $5 bet wins. And by Hyundai, it's your journey. Own every mile in a brand new Hyundai. The view from center field. Oh, Hyundai scoreboard. There. We've been out there many times, Michael. That's our playoff perch. That's right? it. That's right. Kind of the same weather, too, when we get out there yeah. for the playoffs. It's a little chilly. Driven out to right field. Soto on the run. He makes the play to retire. The pinch hitter, Isaiah Conifalefa. <laughs> you just see that ball? Soto threw. He just threw a fly ball in just for fun. to the top of the order and George Springer. Springer a couple of hits and three at bats. Came into the game four for 28 on the season. Ian Hamilton. You know that that's probably a tough call for Boone how valuable Hamilton is to, yeah. to have to bring him into a game that the Yankees were leading 9-2 to two going into the seventh inning. That's, even if they win the game, that's costly. Mm -hmm. I agree. But you don't want to give away wins. You want to nail them down when you can. Verdugo. Lately, What's up? the 21 club. Yeah, well, you ever want? Oh, there you go. Oh, that guy standing <laughs> guard. Those two guys, Paul hires, not to mess with his number. Right. I want to take it away from. Me. <laughs> yeah. 
Guerrero swings and misses. You know what tonight was, Michael? It's been a long off season. I got back up to the booth and our producer Troy Benjamin sent up a pizza. I haven't had a good slice of New York pizza in a while. You, uh, you're unbelievable. Oh. Paul, Paul plans these things. I'll let you inside a little bit. I'm driving to the ballpark. I'm on the Deegan. The text goes off. W what are you doing for dinner? I said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think about that stuff. Oh, you gotta, you gotta think that's the best time of the day. You oh, see, but you love food. I just eat it to survive. Oh. I really love it. I laughed when I came. What are you plans for dinner? Oh, I don't know. I'll go to Wendy's. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I start planning dinner like at ten in the morning. Yes, I know. Right. Neville tells me she absolutely doesn't get it. <laughs> she says I don't care what I eat. I said I do. So where are we going? Who are we meeting? Let's go. You yeah. love the food bazaar, just, don't you? I just like a schedule. You do. Guerrero walks. I mean, Jody will ask me, like, you know, I'm doing a radio show. What do you want for dinner? I said, I don't care. I'll get something out of the refrigerator. I'll just grab it like a sandwich. Yeah, it's, it's not right. Wait, it's not right. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the best time of the day is wow. you know, a dinner. Right? I, I guess I don't think it like that. Well, for, for, I watch what you eat. I wouldn't want to eat either. <laughs> <laughs> And that gets his bar and then something else on the side. Just doesn't quite do it. Why don't you call Uber Eats right now? We'll be back in just a moment as Boone, there's another one, <laughs> goes to the bullpen. One of the great things you get at the stadium. Little Bells is one of my mm -hmm. favorites at the ballpark. A little barbecue sauce to heighten it. Now look at this ball. Wow. This is a dream of yours. <laughs> a little 99 burger. Oh, look at that milkshake. A Mr. Softy has made his way to the stadium. And then we got some dry aged beef. You know, we could we could go all night with this. Look at all this stuff. Not the old just cotton candy and hot dogs. No, you know? no, those are the old days. These are the new days. Here's Ian Hamilton. Has not walked a batter, struck out seven and five and two-thirds. He's been very, very good. And you know what? He is going to be so much more important in that bullpen, you know, after losing Loisica. Right. I mean, there's no doubt now that Loisica, uh, you know, you really can't count on him at any point in the year with with that type of injury. So there's always a surprise. The Yankees are very good at bringing up guys and finding guys at keys. Brian Cashman and, uh, you know, the minor leagues, they, they find guys that help them in the bullpen, Hamilton being one of them. And uh, they're, they're going to have to dig it, dig deep and find some more help because that bullpen, as you said, dude, coming into the game is a huge part of the way they play the game. Pitch outside to Bro Bichette. Bichette with two hits and three at-bats also walked. Ground ball, second base. Glaber Torres gets Bichette. And once again, Hamilton does the job. As the Blue Jays strand one, we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. And this is Oswaldo Cabrera making a beautiful play on serving across the diamond. And he gets and makes the throw from foul territory. He shows a lot of arm. And that's all arm there because you can't get your, your legs into it. It's a great play on the coverage count. And he's going to lead off the bottom of the eighth inning on the Hyundai scoreboard. Yankees lead 9-5. Nate Pearson still in there. IKF takes over in center field. They pinch it for Kiermaier. Crowd of 42,250 at the ballpark on the Saturday evening. Many of them have headed for the exits. As it's kind of chilly, hardy souls that brave some cold weather. Did you mind playing in cold weather? 
You know, I, it, it depends. Early in the year, you expect it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you have a, a day on the road, you, you don't like it. But I thought your concentration was really good because the last thing you want to do is hit a ball off the end of the bat or in on your hands. But uh, it's not ideal. But, you know, the, the bad things are if you have long innings out in the outfield. It, you know, if you're in and off the field, you go in the locker room, you know, if there's a heater in the dugout, uh, it, you're fine. But it's the long innings standing in the outfield. But once you hit a ball off the end of the bat early in the game, you could lose your hand for the rest of the game. You didn't mind cold weather in October, though. That was fine. That's perfect. Yeah, that's what you wanted. Cabrera, one for three tonight. And the count is full of three and two. Took a pop to the game. How about that? Dogs have taken over the world. You, know? you think so? Yeah. Interesting. I live in Florida where you go to a restaurant, half, half the customer are dogs. Now, you lost your little dog. Uh, have you replaced him? No. Uh, 17 years of dogs, that, that was enough. Really? I grew up with big dogs, and we had the little dog. My kids have dogs now, and grandkids. So, so yeah, these are grand dogs for yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I came down yesterday for opening day. I had on, you know, my nice double breasty oh, blue pinstripe suit. suit. Yeah. I come down, my golden retriever butter just jumps all over me. Butter. Butter is her name. Uh-huh. And then there's hair all over the suit. <laughs> Audrey's got a lint brush for you back there. Don't worry about it. I didn't want to come with the uh, the hair all over the... I, I did it at home. It was, it was it's a really, mess. You know what? It's funny how... You know, golden retriever, right? Mm-hmm. Beautiful dog. Beautiful. With hair all over your suit, just, just it doesn't work. You know, the, when it's on the golden retriever, it's beautiful. But yeah, when it's on, on the, the suit, suit, no. It doesn't work. That one is lying to right field off the bat of Torres. It's a base hit. That is going to go to the wall. Torres runs first. He'll go to second. Springer gets it in. And Torres gets a double. Uh, folks, good hitting is fun to watch. I mean, when, when you do what you're supposed to do, this ball's supposed to be up and in, but it's down and away. Wow. Line drive to right field. High leg kick kind of glides towards the ball, but does not lunge. It just allows him to really drag through the ball the other way. So here's Soto. A couple of hits tonight, a couple of ribbies, a walk, a run score. How many just missed? Fouled it back. That was 99 miles an hour. Right on it. Side. One and two. Michael, I meant to ask you yesterday because we went through all the festivities of opening day and stuff. You talked how many games you did. Were you an opening day guy? Did you ever get to go to an opening day at Yankee Stadium? Yes, yeah. I did. That's cool stuff. The biggest one for me was, I, I don't know how I did it, I don't remember, but as a 15-year-old, I got tickets to Yankee Stadium when it reopened. Oh, wow. And all I could think about on the way there, they were going to have a scoreboard that showed oh, yeah. replays. Yeah. Nobody else had that, and they were going to have the scoreboard. And I remember coming up, there was a circular stairway in left field. I came up, I looked out because I wanted to see the scoreboard. It wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. And it said, welcome to the new Yankee Stadium. Wow. Right? And it didn't work. Oh. That's Somebody, what it said the whole show, the whole game. Somebody pulled the plug. Oh, they just didn't work. I was crushed. Soto walks a walk. And didn't they 
They played at Shea Stadium. They played at Shea Stadium. Uh, 74 and 75, yeah. And then I came to a, an opening day against the Texas Rangers, and Bobby Mercer was back with the Yankees after being traded to the Giants and then the Cubs, and he hit a pinch hit grand slam home. Wow. Here's Judge, perfect night, two for two, two walks. Yankees have runners on first and second. There's a strike, one man out here in the bottom of the eighth. Here's Anthony Rizzo, two-run home run right down the right field line, snaking around the foul pole. That was in the fifth. And if you look at it, Michael, I think both managers would agree that, you know, they had to use guys in their bullpen that they really didn't want to use in this type of game. But it's, you know, it's what the, what happened with the pitching. Toronto battled backwards, still a chance. And so, you know, Hamilton's in the game. You had to use Pearson and you Meza. Guys that, you know, you've kind of wiped out the bullpen with a day game tomorrow. One one upstairs. Got a little bit of a look-alike for you, Paul. Nate Pearson and Chicago White Sox era Goose Gossage. You know what? I can almost see that. Especially the sideway. Uh -huh. look. Before Goose grew that long mustache. <laughs> Can't get over your story yesterday about Goose fighting in the shower. Yep. <laughs> Slider, three strikeouts for Pearson, Yankee Strand. Two, we go to the ninth. You can hear from Aaron Boone on the manager's report. That's all coming up next on Yes and the Yes Act. So Ian Hamilton will try to get the final three outs and even this series up in a game apiece and give the Yankees their seventh win of the year, but three outs to go. And it'll be four, five, and six in the Blue Jays' order, starting with Justin Turner. And a strike.
0-2. Turner's 0 for 2. Sack fly and a walk. Also run scored. Hamilton throws hard and then also features that Slombio slider and a change. That one is looped in the center field. It's a base hit for Turner. And the leadoff runner's on here in the ninth inning. Hey, please spend your Sunday afternoon with Yes as the Yankees wrap up this weekend set with the Blue Jays. Coverage begins at 12.30 with Audi batting practice today in the pregame with first pitch scheduled for 135 on Yes and the Yes app. And remember, if you get Yes on TV, then you get the Yes app for free or sign up for a subscription. Here's Vogelback. RBI double over the head of Soto his last time up. He's one for four. Now this spot could be the spot that eventually goes to Joey Votto, but Joey Votto did need a home run in his first at bat in the minors and uh, then sprained his ankle mm -hmm. going into the dugout and now he's kind of put on the shelf and it'd be a great story. Votto is from Toronto, grew up a big Blue Jay fan and his time with Cincinnati was over, but he still wants to play. Two on one. In a game that you were leading nine two, you have to get your closer up, Clay Holmes. So these are little victories, even if the Blue Jays don't win. The Yankees have gotten up some high leverage guys. One of them's in the game right now. And now you're warming up Clay Holmes. And this is not a knock on, on, on Aaron Boone or Matt Blake. You, you want to win the game. You want to nail it down. But you never thought you'd be in this position. But Luke Weaver running out of gas the way he did kind of put them in this position. That has become a little bit more of a nail biter, biter than you thought it was going to be. Three and two on Vogel back. Aaron Boone has to know this tomorrow with at least heel throwing that, you know, who's going to be available? Who, who, who do I have? How far do I need to get before I can go to the bullpen? Popped up behind the plate. And out of play. That's the budget. So they used Birdie for 24 yesterday. Santana for 37. Caleb Ferguson for 17. Thursday was an off day for all. So, I mean, the bullpen's in pretty good shape. But if you use Hamilton at home now, you can use him again tomorrow. But they can use him Monday against the Marlins. So, but, you, know, you got to think days ahead. And Vogelback works a walk, and just like that, the Blue Jays have runners on first and second, and nobody out. Here's pesky Ernie Clement. Two for three, sack fly, run scored. A couple of doubles. Sky the other way and out of play. Don't the game's changed a little bit, Michael. You're down four runs. Runner before just walked. As you look at his home run from yesterday, a big pinch hit off the bench. Ended up being the go ahead run. But then you, you know, instead of trying to work a walk, you come up swinging first pitch, first two pitches. Quickly 0 2. She's got a piece to say alive. It's like they walked into a time warp, Mike. We're back to three and a half hour games, huh? Yes. I was thinking the same thing like the old days. 
long counts, working counts, a lot of traffic on the bases. That's what happens. surprised that he still had a play. He initially looked at first base and when he didn't have a play. But a big out. Nice stretch there by Torres. Be careful that spike coming up from Vogelback. Lucky that Glaber didn't get that in the back of the foot. There's Davis Schneider. Two home runs this year. The only guy left on the bench is uh, Kevin Biggio. They've used IKF, Kirk, and Schneider. One on one. in on the hands the foul ball we told you stand and judge when they home run in the game the Yankees are 31 and 4 trying to make that 32 and 4 and hold on here wow amazing that that didn't burn <laughs> What you're doing here with the pitch count going up, you might not have Hamilton for more. Yeah, day game after, you know, at 22 pitches. I mean, you know, even if you finish the inning out, you're looking at 25 to 30. High fly ball, deep right. Going back is Soto on the track. He can't make the play. It's off the base of the wall. Backing up is Judge. Scoring is Turner. Moving to third is Clement. And it's a double and a ribby for Schneider. And now it's 9-6 Yankees. And the time run will come to the plate. Hey, I want Soto going back. And I think he got caught up in the fencing of the wall. Not able to make the play. Off or just had the wind knocked out. Looking at his hand. Yeah, you grab that fence going into it, and sometimes your fingers can go through the chain link part of it. Yankees go to their closer. Beating his bare hand since attempting to make that catch, he jammed it up against the fence, which is in front of the video board. Kept massaging it as he was talking to Verdugo and Judge. Stays in the game. Clay Holmes deals to Alejandro Kirk, and there's a strike 0 and 1. So now it's the same situation. Holmes has been near perfect. The one game he quote unquote blew was because of a, a, an error by Volpe. They had great stuff against the Diamondbacks. Yankees ended up winning in 11 innings. So he got the win in that one rather than the save. Clement at third. Snyder's at second. One and two. Been using the slider a lot this year. Obviously, his power sinker is the money pitch, but 
When he can throw that sider for strikes, he's so much tougher than just throwing that one. There's that 97 mile an hour sinker in the count three and two. Well, you got to stick with your strength here, Mike. You talked about that sinker. I mean, uh, you've got to throw it for a strike here. Trying to keep Kirk on the ground. He does up the middle. Fielded there by Volpe. A run will score. That's the second out. Moving to third is Schneider, and now it's 9 7 Yankees. It's the only thing that worries me about the slider, Michael. If you hang that, that's a ball that guys can elevate and get out of the ballpark. Where a good sinker, you might give up a base hit if a ground ball finds a hole, but a good sinker, you're going to keep on the ground. All right, so John Schneider, the uh, manager, goes to his final piece off the bench. That's Kevin Biggio. The lefty against the righty Holmes, so he's pinch hitting for IKF. Runner at third, two men out. Blue Jays about hit the Yankees. Yankees leading 9 7. And a strike. A weird defense going on with Cabrera pretty much in at third base. Everybody actually back and trying to take away, I guess, the bunt if Pitcher decides to drag bunt. He seems to be moving back every pitch. One one. Popped up behind the plate, not a play. Well, that takes away the bump. Count one and two. Now the bar can back up even more. Yankees a strike away from nailing this down. They'd like to get Biggio right here rather than deal with the veteran Springer who's on deck. And then after that it's Guerrero. 9-10 and 0 Yanks, 7-11 and 1 for the Blue Jays. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Yankees up by two. Time run at the plate. 2-2. Two -two. Hit shortly at Volpe, and it's past him for a base hit. So a pinch hit single for Biggio. A run scores, and now the Yankee lead is one skinny run. It's 9-8. John Schneider's got to be happy with guys off the bench this series. Hit Clement yesterday with a huge home run, and now a big base hit by Biggio. Again, sinker. They're going to give up hits once in a while. That's That ball's up a little bit, hit hard. You see Volpe kind of jumping and it just cannot get to it. And here is a dangerous George Springer. Slider for a strike. Biggio is a tying run at first base. Can the Yankees hold on? Swing and a miss on the sweeper. Now it's 0 2. Springer's such a good fastball hitter. He's going to the right field a lot this series. So he's starting him off with two breaking balls. Swing and a miss. Yankees win. They hold on. They take a deep breath and they win 9 to 8 to pick up their seventh win of the year. Big home run for Aaron Judge. Soto, even Stanton contributed with a home run to right, and Anthony Rizzo as well. So three home runs, extra base hits galore. Yankees win 9-8. Yeah, the, the, the Bombers were out early. They put up a big lead. Uh, Toronto fought their way back, but all smiles now. Again, getting that first win at home. Three consecutive breaking balls to George Springer. See you tomorrow, Mike. Now, like the old show on Ted Knight. Too close for comfort, but they'll take it. Clay Holmes nails it down. Yankees win 9-8. We'll be back.